A slowdown in China. What's happening? China's economy is facing strong headwinds. Growth has slowed. Deflation is a real concern. The property market is struggling. These issues have global implications. What is China doing to turn things around? The Chinese government has announced new economic support measures. These measures aim to stabilize the struggling property market. They also seek to provide relief to indebted local governments. But are these measures enough to reignite growth? Economists are divided. Some believe the new measures are a step in the right direction. Others argue that they lack the scale and urgency needed to address the underlying problems. The coming months will be crucial for China's economic future. China's property sector is a major engine of economic growth, but it has been in a slump for several years. This has had a ripple effect throughout the economy. To address this, the government has announced new support measures for the sector. These measures include tax breaks for home buyers. There's also easier access to mortgages for first-time buyers. The government hopes these incentives will revive demand for housing. But some analysts argue these measures may not be enough. They point to the oversupply of housing in many Chinese cities. They also highlight the growing reluctance of young people to invest in real estate. Will these measures be enough to revive the struggling property market? Local governments in China play a crucial role in implementing economic policy. They are the backbone of the country's economic engine, translating national strategies into local actions. But many are burdened by high levels of debt. This debt has accumulated over years of aggressive borrowing to fund rapid urbanization and infrastructure development. This limits their ability to invest in infrastructure and other growth-enhancing projects. Stalled construction sites and underdeveloped areas are becoming more common reflecting the financial strain. To ease the pressure on local governments, the central government has announced debt relief measures. These measures are part of a broader strategy to stabilize the economy and ensure sustainable growth. These include extending the maturity of existing loans, allowing more time for repayment without immediate financial pressure, and providing new lines of credit. This infusion of capital is intended to rejuvenate stalled projects and kickstart new initiatives. The government hopes this will free up funds for local governments to support economic growth. By alleviating financial constraints, local authorities can focus on development and innovation. However, some economists are skeptical about the effectiveness of these measures. They question whether these steps are enough to address the deep-rooted financial issues. They argue that the debt relief offered is insufficient to address the scale of the problem. The sheer magnitude of the debt requires more comprehensive solutions. They also express concern that local governments may lack the capacity to implement complex economic projects effectively. The success of these measures depends on the ability of local officials to manage and execute plans efficiently. Recently, I held a press conference to address the government's economic support measures. I acknowledged the challenges facing the Chinese economy but I expressed confidence in our ability to navigate these challenges. However, some economists have criticized the finance minister's remarks. They argue that his tone lacked a sense of urgency. They point to the absence of concrete targets or timelines for the implementation of the announced measures. The lack of clear communication from the government has fueled uncertainty in the markets. This uncertainty could further dampen investor confidence. It remains to be seen whether the government will take more decisive action to address the economic slowdown. Section 5. The Consumption Conundrum Why is it key? Boosting domestic consumption is crucial for China's long-term economic health. Reliance on exports and investment has driven growth in the past, but this model is no longer sustainable. To shift towards a more consumption-driven economy, China needs to increase household incomes. It also needs to improve social safety nets. This would give consumers more confidence to spend. However, the government's recent measures have focused primarily on supporting the property sector and local governments. There has been less emphasis on measures to directly boost consumer spending. Without a significant increase in consumption, can China achieve sustainable economic growth? Section 6. Economists weigh in. Are the measures sufficient? Economists are divided on the effectiveness of China's new economic support measures. The recent policies have sparked a heated debate among experts, with opinions varying widely. Some believe they are a step in the right direction. 
These economists argue that the measures will provide a much-needed boost to the property sector and local governments, which have been struggling. They highlight the potential for these policies to stimulate growth in key areas, such as real estate and infrastructure, which are critical for the overall economy. However, other economists are less optimistic. They argue that the measures are too limited in scope and lack the urgency needed to address the scale of China's economic challenges. These critics point out that the current policies do not go far enough to tackle the underlying issues, such as high debt levels and slowing consumer spending. They emphasize the lack of concrete measures to boost consumption as a major concern. Without significant efforts to increase consumer confidence in spending, they fear the economy may continue to stagnate. The debate among economists highlights the uncertainty surrounding China's economic future. With differing opinions on the effectiveness of the measures, it remains unclear which path the economy will take. The effectiveness of the government's measures remains to be seen. Policymakers are under pressure to deliver results, and the coming months will be critical in assessing the impact of these policies. The coming months will be crucial in determining whether China can avert a deeper economic slowdown. As the world watches closely, the outcomes of these measures will have significant implications, not just for China, but for the global economy as well. And Section 7. The Specter of Deflation. A Looming Threat. Deflation, a sustained decrease in the general price level of goods and services, is a growing concern for China. This economic phenomenon can have far-reaching consequences, affecting various sectors and the overall health of the economy. Falling prices may seem like a good thing for consumers, as it means they can buy more for less. However, this initial benefit can be deceptive, but deflation can be a sign of a weakening economy. When prices fall, businesses earn less revenue, which can lead to layoffs and reduced investment in growth. It can lead to a vicious cycle of falling demand and investment. As businesses cut back, workers lose jobs, and with less income, consumer spending drops further, exacerbating the problem. China has recently experienced a period of falling consumer prices. This trend has been observed across various sectors, from retail to manufacturing. This has raised concerns that the country may be slipping into deflation. Economists are closely monitoring these developments, as prolonged deflation can be challenging to reverse. The government's economic support measures are partly aimed at preventing this from happening. These measures include stimulus packages, tax cuts, and other financial incentives to boost spending and investment. However, some economists argue that the government's measures may not be enough to prevent deflation from taking hold. They believe that more robust and immediate actions are required to counteract the deflationary pressures. They argue that more aggressive action, such as increasing government spending or cutting interest rates, may be necessary. These steps could help stimulate the economy by encouraging borrowing and spending, thereby reversing the deflationary trend. Section 8. Global Implications What happens if China falters? China is the world's second-largest economy. Its economic performance has significant implications for the global economy. A slowdown in China could have a ripple effect around the world, reducing demand for goods and services. The recent economic data from China has already caused concern among investors and policymakers globally. A deeper slowdown in China could have a negative impact on global growth prospects. The international community is closely watching China's economic policies and performance. Many countries are hoping that China will be able to achieve a soft landing for its economy. A successful outcome would benefit not only China, but also the global economy as a whole. Section 9. A call for decisive action, China's choice. China faces a critical juncture. The government's response to the current economic challenges will have far-reaching consequences. Decisive action is needed to restore confidence and put the economy back on a sustainable growth path. Boosting domestic consumption should be a top priority. This requires increasing household incomes and strengthening social safety nets. Structural reforms are also essential to address long-standing issues, such as overcapacity in certain industries and the dominance of state-owned enterprises. The world is watching. China's choices will not only shape its own destiny, but also have a profound impact on the global economy. Section 10. Your perspective matters. Join the conversation. 
What are your thoughts on China's economic outlook? Do you believe the government's recent measures are enough to address the challenges facing the economy? What other steps should China take to ensure sustainable growth? Share your views and join the conversation on this important issue. Section 11. The Future of China's Economy What's next? China's economic future hangs in the balance. The government's recent support measures represent a recognition of the challenges ahead, but their effectiveness remains to be